Guys, welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. It's great to be with you guys. I roll out these uh, portfolio updates on a periodic basis through the channel to demonstrate how money acts when it is exposed to risk. And I think this can help introduce a lot of new investors to what is to expect. And I share this openly. Um, this is my money, so you put no risk on the table. Um, when, I, when things are bad, you can sit back and enjoy when things are bad. When things are good, um, you can kind of sit back and maybe understand what could be potentially uh, applicable to you and what you could expect from the stock market. Uh, there's never been this uh, level of, of, of buffer and transparency uh, with what's to expect in the stock market. You know, uh, many years ago, you would have had to just, you know, invest with blind faith. And now, really, you can educate yourself up um, before you even invest one dollar into the stock market and I think that's where the value proposition of videos like this are is you can also see the aesthetics of, of the broker that I chronicle in this video which is M1 Finance um, if you're interested in the portfolio that I'm going to declare to you it is uh, located in the description below uh, and so you can kick over there and, and, and you can check it out for yourself uh, so it, it's a great way for beginning investors to get that introductory start into the market and feel like they've got somebody on their side. So with that, guys, we're going to jump in and we're going to check out my 100 stock uh, M1 Finance portfolio here and the progress that's been made over the last couple of years, guys. Please enjoy. And a lot of people pursue wealth building and a lot for a lot of different reasons. I pursue it for one reason and one reason only, and that's to make money. Okay. Um, I think it's exciting. Um, I think it is possible. Uh, I think a lot of people pursue um, excitement in the stock market only to get burned and then it's not fun anymore. Okay, um, This portfolio is a dividend growth portfolio and this is exciting. This is fun. Um, this is comprised of uh, just over 90 uh, stock holdings. Okay, So um, this is not ETF. This is not index. This is not mutual fund. These are single stocks in this comprised of around, I think, 93 or so. We can check that when we get to the, um, the investment piece to this. But I just want to stress to everybody out there, while everybody else is trying to identify that basket of 10 or 20 stocks that are going to work for them, um, this basket of 93 of the best companies that I feel exist on the earth um, can uh, be utilized by anyone out there. Um, these companies are not secrets. Um, they are the best companies out there, and they have been the ones that have been tried and true to provide and pay back shareholders over, over the long term. And this portfolio only uh, represents that fact. Now, there is no uh, uh, um, promise of return into the future. However, when we look at the past performance of these equities, there is no denying the power of investing in this way. And over the short term, it has grown and it has digressed with the market sell-off. Um, so we're in a little bit of a consolidation phase here, uh, as indicated by this small uh, little leap uh, dive off the high dive here. Um, but it's come back a little bit over the last month or so as the market has been trying to find its footing. The total inflows into the portfolio just shy of uh, or just north of $24,000. we have got just over $31,381 in this dividend growth portfolio. This is a fabulous way of investing. So basically what happens in this is about every morning I wake up and I have new dividends. Okay. Now let's take a look here. We've just got over 1,100 in dividends. Now mind you, I have not had this portfolio uh, but just around, what is that, two, two and a half years or so. So very, very impressive with uh, 8,300 of total gains. Uh, 7,200 of those have come by uh, capital appreciation in the market. Uh, that's accounting for this last sell-off in the market as well. Uh, and then uh, earned dividends to boot to throw onto this. So we'll take a look at where those dividends are coming from. Financial staples and technologies lead the way. I'm kind of surprised at that. Um, I hadn't checked it before I shot. Uh, but technology here um, is leading the way because I built this with a little bit more of an emphasis on dividends. So I would have left out uh, companies like uh, Apple and Microsoft and I would have opted for companies like Cisco 
and IBM and the like here in this. So that's why um, this technology. But these dividends are are impressive, and these these add up just a few bucks a, a pop. But when you're getting paid these dividends on 95 uh, holdings, and you're getting paid uh, on most of these quarterly. Um, it really adds up to around 400 dividend payments per year. Now, if you, I want you to think about that for a second. If you sit back and you say, gosh, Ryan just talked about establishing a portfolio that pays me when I'm doing other things. Um, I do not jockey with this portfolio. Um, I did just take a big liquidation in energy, uh, and I added in one particular name in energy. But for the most part, this portfolio does not incur a lot of churn. In other words, I invest in this and I forget it. It's very, very simple. And um, the renderings are, um, they are undeniable. This is a great way of investing. Now, we are subject to single stock equity in this, but I want to talk a little bit about the breakdown in this portfolio here. Healthcare leads the way. Healthcare has been the outperformer. Nobody's talked about it. This ensures that I have access to not only healthcare if it decides to go bananas, which it has, uh, as well as energy, which has gone bananas as well, and some of the other sectors that are kind of rolled off here. We're down big in materials. Materials is down around 30%. I expect that to turn around. And the cool thing about it is M1 Finance will continue to fund these low sectors um, until they turn around and basically ensure that I'm catching the bottom in new fundings that flow into this. Um, my target allocation here is indicative by the uh, top and bottom line. So the actual dollars held represent 14.6 in healthcare. Uh, and my target allocation is 12%, which basically impacts new fundings that would flow into this, would not go to this healthcare sector as it's overweight, rather go into this underweight sector uh, like telecom, real estate, uh, and materials respectively. So um, this is the coolest part where I go over the actual holdings in the portfolio. You're going to see um, some red here uh, in some of the holdings. There's 97 positions in the portfolio uh, as, at the time of filming this video. But I always take a scroll through quickly so people can get kind of a 97 stock pick video under 10 minutes. And it's actually kind of special because you get to see how the stock has performed. I'm not just recommending stocks that I feel or have an instinct about me that are going to go up or down. Um, these are the stocks that I really feel like are, are wonderful long-term holds. And these are the ones that I want to start the dividend depreciation on. In other words, when these pay, even as little as they do pay, it starts the snowball effect uh, in building these, these companies. See, I, I can hold Intel here. Uh, just owning, you know, 13.69 shares of the company. I'm down a $200 bill. It's no problem. I'll continue to own this over the long term, and it will in time turn around. Um, Thermo Fisher Scientific, CVS. We go through here, and you're going to see a little bit more red, I think, in these holdings uh, than you would normally see in um, in a bull market or an up market. I did these before, and I've had less than 10 um, out of these. So the market is fluctuating and it's it's um, really sifting out right now and it's it's settling. It's taking into account the effects of high inflation. It's no problem. I'm not going to sell my equities, you know, to, to, to gain more cash as cash is losing value right now. That's absurd. These equities right here pay me to own them. So it makes total sense. Look at Enbridge right there up 12%. That's a company that I just added into um, into energy. So that's really nice. Some of these great companies like Medtronic, uh, Starbucks down 20%. Don't worry a bit about that. Um, uh, APD products, one of the best materials holdings you can have out there. So a spackling of some green and some red, but uh, for the most part, the longer you hold these equities, the more they'll end up paying you back and we can get these um, up above um, their, their nominal purchase price. Um, as we look to recover. And in the meantime, we're going to continue to fund these equities over time. So Royal Bank of Canada, the banks have rolled off a little bit in Canada. They were up for a while, helping to drive the portfolio forward. There's Northrop Grumman. They're up 50% um, as we are in a time of geopolitical conflict now um, on the worldwide stage. But uh, look at that streak of green right there. Boom, 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 streak of green. 
This is Wealth Building 101, guys. If you kind of understand a little bit of method to my madness, there's Sonofi. There's a, that's a good one. I've just added to the portfolio. Um, I've added the, the real estate REIT section, um, which is really rolled off. It has not done well since I've added. That's totally fine. I wanted to own the sector, and I did. I added it into there. There's a nice streak of red right there on the screen for you. All good companies uh, just need to find its footing in this what has been really, really rough stock market. There's, there's no doubt about that. But uh, <coughs> we will continue to own for the long term and uh, look to continue to periodically update you on this portfolio uh, as, it, as it grows and as it materializes. And uh, on to 50 grand. Guys, we'll kick you back and we'll conclude the video. All right, guys, so we've come out of the dividend uh, stock portfolio. There's a lot of people out there seeking dividends in a lot of different ways. Uh, the secret is to understand that there's no real right or wrong answer. Uh, it's just how you seek out your wealth building strategy. This is a part of my total comprehensive portfolio. It is not uh, any way in its entirety my specific strategy, but one of many. Uh, and I teach upon this. I think a lot of people need to be a lot more open-minded and ask themselves what they want out of investing. This strategy can be a great way to avoid what I see as a mistake all the time in markets where people enter into uh, the stock market and they try to pick their best five stocks. I think that can be a real fallacy. In this uh, account, I've got 100. And so, you know, a good handful of them can not perform over time. And, you know, the idea is that while, you know, a few underperformers are not doing well, um, that you've got the majority of the portfolio always churning and then all of the portfolio is paying a dividend uh, rendering throughout the year. So you're making money while you're out doing whatever it is that you need to do with your time to actually make money. And money's working for you and that is the key to any wealth building strategy is to make sure that you position your dollars to work for you over time. Guys, if you appreciate the message, I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Uh, leave your comments at the bottom of the video, please, and share the information with anybody out there that you know, friends, family, anybody interested in embarking upon a wealth journey, a wealth building journey for themselves, bring them onto the channel. We'd be glad to have them to share the empowering message of taking control of your own money for a better future. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video and good luck in your investment future.